Have you ever played a game that you just can't figure out how it happened, let alone that it works now that it did happen? That is this game, Dark Venture. Okay, this is the second edition, and I have to point that out right away because it's very important that you understand that there are rules out there for the first edition and an FAQ and forums and whatnot, and they all refer to the first edition because I made this horrible mistake of reading the rulebook, which is a very easy read, by the way. It's very small. It's very straightforward. It sounds like every adventure game that you would make, you know, like just like this makes sense. I can drop equipment here and do this here. And there was a version of this, like the first version that, um, or first edition rather, that had like almost a very heavily action, used action point system. It just, it just seems like it's a different game. So when I went out looking for uh, rules clarifications and whatnot, I kept running into first edition rules and I didn't realize it. And so then I'm like, taking in all these rules and they're contradicting what I thought I had learned from the book and then finally it dawned on me they made that many changes to the game. They, they, I say they, Rob Lemon, that's like a single dude, uh, made this game. Uh, his company is Gilded Skull Games and the game is still available and I'm going to tell, tell you right now, it's absolutely incredible. I cannot tell you about any of the expansions. I don't own any of them, but for $44 you can get the base game and that's everything that I have right here in front of me and it is 100% worth it. This game, I, I don't know how many games have won me over so fast, but this one's got to be like in the top five games. It just, it's, it, this can't work. This shouldn't work. This is going to be too cumbersome. Eh. And then somehow it's not, and it's smooth, and it just works and makes sense. And with the second edition, holy cow, is this awesome. So we're going to jump right into it just in the sake, for, for the name, for the sake of time. I have everything all set up. The decks are shuffled. I've got my character. I've got my stats out here. I'm going to use a black cube to keep track of my quest points because it's easier to see uh, this cube on this overhead camera. We've got our round tracker here. So we're going to start here at hour one. We're going to be using the A series of books, which, you know, this is a perfect example of one of those things that I thought this cannot possibly work. I'm not going to want to look into a book every single time I play a card that has a number on it like this. It's all these location cards, right? That's these. Uh, it works perfectly fine. It's fantastic. And think about it. He could release a C or D or E or F series of books because uh, the base game does come with A and B books. And so you take both A's and that's what we're playing. And we could play, and I would love to try this one day just to see, just as an experiment. Play the game using the A rules and then play the exact same locations using the B books and just see how crazy different it is, right? This, this game takes... Uh, and, I, and this isn't disparaging towards Hexplorit. I love the Hexplorit series. I just don't always have 10 hours to play a whole game of Hexplorit, right? When I want some epic story, that's where I'm going. This takes an awesome, like, chapter of a story and lets me play that in somewhere between one and two hours, usually. It's phenomenal. And it is the weirdest story and the weirdest setting, and it all works. It, I cannot believe it. Uh, so here's a little bit in the book here. It does come with this setup reference card that tells you, you know, what to pull out, what to what to put, what to shuffle, what to draw, yada, yada. Oh, I haven't drawn my cards yet. Uh, when looking back, a catastrophic event like the one that changed our world must have been an inevitable, but on that day, it was not expected. The first wave of the cataclysm hit quickly, transforming most living creatures in some way. Many were killed instantly. A short time later, another wave struck, altering all life once again. Our reality has been distorted in ways we could never have imagined. Learned, learned warlocks who studied the cataclysm discovered that our land had been encircled by restrained primordial forces referred to as arcane magics. In the distant past, these magics were readily accessible, but a curse later held them at bay, keeping them damned and building for millennia. Somehow the curse was broken, and it is this, they write, that unleashed the great change upon our land. We heroes have become the new rulers of the earth. We manage the repercussions of civilization having spun backwards, guiding its remaining inhabitants through various inconceivable, diverse refractions of space and time. We venture into darkness and uncertainty, moving among the ruins of progress. The world has unquestionably become a peculiar and merciless place. Explore it with us as we struggle to survive. And that is, man, like, that explains everything you need to know and why it's just all good. It's just all good. Like, you'll draw a card. It's like, reach into a temporal rift and pull out an item. All good. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you traveled through time and you brought, like, healing herbs. All good. Like, whatever. <laughs> just, it, just, it just works. It, it's just, it's fantastic. So, 
because I don't have a lot of time, I cannot dwell too much on rules and whatnot. I do have everything at the ready. Here's the things you can do spending your action points, which are these three uh, little orange cubes down here, right? You get three actions per round. You can move to a location, right? Locations are these little cards out here. This is our little man. We'll talk about him in just a minute. Uh, and you can search a location, which is fantastic. We can draw item cards. You can just straight up draw a card. Maybe you absolutely need a location or a character card, right? You can also initiate combat with other characters on spaces. You can, and these are really, these are cool. Free once and then they're paid. So you can play a character card out of your hand and a location card for free the first time each round. And so that's why I have these little cubes here. I'm gonna use these. Uh, I wish I do wish there was a little space here for these though. It'd be perfect, but there's not. Uh, I'm gonna use these two cubes and these are location cards and these are character cards. The game does come with this. This is awesome. I love little boards like this in games, uh, but with uh, sleeved cards, they don't quite fit the way I want them to in my Fat fingers need to get in there and shuffle these a lot. So I actually just have this like standing up behind them, leaning on something, uh, just so that I can remember which is which. So if I play a location card, I'm gonna spend my green cube so that I know that I spent my free location, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, and then characters are the same, they're blue. You can play a character card. And that's another thing that I didn't think worked in this game at all. How do you play character cards? In here are enemies, followers, and the heroes that aren't in the game. And you draw these cards and you just, like, what, this is silly. But no, it's incredible. It's a living, breathing world and you're just putting cards out wherever you want. It's phenomenal how this works. Uh, here we have completely free actions, right? Now, I believe these were not free before. Uh, trading and giving an item, equip, use, pick up, or drop an item. I, I think there's, there was some difference here in the original rules. Uh, and then there's a whole thing about aggressive characters where they attack you immediately. Combat is really simple. It's actually just this left half. And it's those two yellow parts on top, right? Roll for initiative and then roll for damage. And then just alternate back and forth doing damage to each other. Uh, the other stuff is in case somebody has to flee from combat, gets killed, knocked unconscious, uh, using an item in combat. It's all very straightforward. It, it, it really does work very well. We do have to do a lot of sorting through these cards, though. Now, when you play solo, you do have special rules, though, right? There are some cards that are removed from the game, and so they are flat out not in my game. I put them in a, in a little pack, and they're in the box, so I won't run into them. Uh, but then the one, two, and three down here, like in the middle of your screen, at the beginning of the game, a player draws four heroic quests, chooses two, and then shuffles the rest back, and grabs three side quests. So these are the three I drew from the side quests. These are heroic. I drew four. I picked two, which sounded complimentary. Uh, and then I shuffled the other ones back into there. And then I have a maximum hand of seven instead of six. And that is, uh, that's how that goes. Now, in a solo game, you can do a solo questing game, a short game or a long game. And I think today, just for the purposes of storytelling here, we'll just do a short game so you can see how this game works because that's what this is all about, is just seeing how this game works. It's absolute brilliance and amazing storytelling that happens from, from whether it's a short game or long game or whatever, it doesn't matter. The system works really well. Uh, so, at the so what we're going to do, we do in a short game, a player must gather 15 quest points uh, by Meridian, that's, that's uh, level 6, after completing 6 rounds to win the game, right? So we're going to do 6 rounds. So if we look here, here's the Meridian line right here, right in the center. We're playing to the end of this round. So we'll go here, we'll play out our 3 actions, plus 2, and then be done, okay? So that's what we're going to do, and we're trying to get 15 quest points. So we're going to go zoop, halfway through right there, and just as such. Um, and then you have the option to play a long game, which is 12 rounds. I just don't think I have the time today, and I really would rather just get the video out so everybody can see how awesome the second edition is. Now, I also believe that maybe once you get very familiar with the rules and you become very good at the game, you might want to be playing this here, the solo ranked game, right? So this is a little bit different. You do all 12 rounds. You do not draw a heroic quest card when you hit the Meridian. That is going to be different. Um, but you score points and you try to get to legendary hero and you try to get to 45 points. So that's awesome. Uh, that's going, you know, a lap and a half on the quest point track, which is, uh, would have been kind of cool if they had that on the back, maybe, I think, you know, like, like that would have been pretty sweet, but you know, whatever, it's easy to count to 30 and then just remember you got 15 more to go. Every game starts with the crossroads card, right? This is where all the heroes start the game in a multiplayer or a solo game. Apparently this plays to four people, but I will never play this with another human, I am sure of it. Uh, and when you start, you get one location, one character, and two items, so I don't know what they are. Let's go ahead and talk about our character here. So this is the guy, wonder why I picked this guy. I, I hand chose this man. 
Kroshul the Brave. Take a look at his stats. He is card number four. He has four strength, four speed, four mind, four luck, and 36 hit points, right? So the hit points are down here on the 36. Now I've built myself a little barricade here at 46 because it says he starts the game with the Barking Stick, which is a mighty, it has a mighty aura. Plus 10 base health. You do not heal for that. You just get that. So my actual maximum is 46, but at this time, I only have 36 hit points. And then you also get plus one strength, plus one mind, and it's a two-handed weapon, right? So there's a plus one strength, so I go from four to five. Plus one mind, I go from four to five. And then this up the top is four damage. So I have a plus four right here. This guy also starts with leather body armor. And you can see that this is plus one defense, so I'm gonna take one point less damage in combat, plus one luck, and it's body armor, but it reduces my speed by one while that's equipped. Okay, so that's why we're down to three on our speed, the yellow one there. And then I have a medical pack. Like this guy starts out decked out, right? Just ready for combat, which is why I, like, <laughs> I took the quests I did. There are, are quests, uh, heroic quests for like uh, delivery stuff and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, finding certain items and doing all this stuff. And these were like, kill people. And I'm like, we got you. Okay, we got this, right? Uh, the medical pack, when used, heals 20 hit points and gain one action point this turn, right? So that's amazing. I could use it right away, but I would only heal the 10 points. And so we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep that little guy for a little bit. And that's, that's the gist of it here. Now, this guy also has his own abilities, right? So heroic strikes twice per battle, once per battle turn, add 1d6 to his attack damage. It's just like an extra die. That's incredible. And loner, he, uh, heal 2d6 hit points at loner's cavern for one action point. So that's a location. So it's in here somewhere, right? A lot of this game is trying to find a card or get a location that you need to fulfill these quests. And this is one quest point, one quest point, one quest point. These two are a lot of quest points. This one says, find revenge. A renowned hero, be it by mistake or on purpose, has killed your friend. A local village elder, you intend to avenge their death. Draw. Oh, I didn't do this yet. Draw cards until you find a hero, shuffle the rest back. Okay, so you know what I, I do need to do then? When does this happen? Uh, so step eight, each player draws their cards. I did that, place the quest track out. So number six, the first player shuffles a heroic quest. So, so that would have come before I drew my hand. I mean, I guess not that it matters, so I'm not going to mess with it. But I guess technically I should have drawn from here for characters before I drew my hand, I guess. Um, but it doesn't matter. They're all random anyway. It's less shuffling to do it this way. Uh, okay, draw until you find a hero, shuffle the rest back. So we have to draw, follower, until we find a hero card. Follower, oh, arrow. I had this horse one time we played, it was amazing. Wool hero, okay, so whatever that guy is. So we found what looks like Homer Simpson as a robot. <laughs> All right, Peregradel, okay. So he is, he is, he is a robot man for sure. Corrupt program, yeah, he definitely is. Okay, never, I've never seen so many cards in this game. It's amazing. Okay, what else do we do here? Uh, uh, find a hero, so that's this guy. Shuffle the rest back, we did that. Equip the drawn hero and in two game rounds at the beginning of the round, so we're gonna just put a marker here. I'll use uh, two yellow cubes. So in two rounds, we're gonna spawn this guy, it sounds like, at the beginning of the round or whenever possible, place them into an empty location. Your hero or their follower must defeat that hero in combat once to gain six quest points. Okay, and then we have to equip him. Draw six items. Oh my goodness, pick one weapon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six cards. Pick a weapon. So we only drew one weapon, it looks like. So we drew this. Heavy blade. Requires six strength. He can't wear it. Uh, oh no. Oh, that's wild. Okay, check this out. So it's, yeah, it's plus two strength, and he has a four strength that requires six strength. Um, oh, it's or is two-handed. Okay, so he could wear it no matter what. Okay, but now he has six strength. Okay, so he's, dang, he's got a fat sword on him. Oh, no. And he's going to spawn and kill me. <laughs> uh, these are the things that I have to shuffle back. See, there's a lot of shuffling in this. That is the only negative thing I have to say about this game. Uh, is that, you know, every round it seems like I'm, I'm doing this twice. I'm shuffling one or more stacks of cards every every turn. Uh, anyway, that's the gist of it here. Uh, what's the other one here? You recently happened upon an old blind hermit living in a cave atop Adaraj Mountain. We may as well just read through all the quests. 
In exchange for some food, he told your fortune. He prophesied, prophetized that with his help, you will stop a plot to kill the king. You allow him to cast an incantation on you. Whenever you are in the same location as another hero, including in the crossroads, once per hero... Oh, they, they point that out because you start the game here. So if there was four players, there'd be three other dudes here. Uh, once per hero until you find the traitor. Roll 1d6 plus your mind score. So my mind is five. If the total, uh, if the roll total is ten or higher, you sense that this is the traitor who will kill the king. Gain two quest points. Defeat them in combat to change their path and gain four additional quest points and then discard this card. So this heroic quest is six points. And remember, we're trying to get to 15. And that's 12 points right here plus these. So I have, I'm out of here. Have your hero or their follower successfully flee from a battle. Come get me. How funny. Use a bow to hit a character in an adjacent lo adjacent location. I don't have a bow. Flashy, equip a jewel and keep it equipped for two game rounds. Okay, well, I don't have a jewel either. Let's see what we drew. We drew Wesker's Dirt Hole. Love it. Something called Draken. I've never seen this card either. Oh, it's a follower. On each turn in this location, roll 2d6 plus luck. If 13 or more, he joins your hero. 6 to 12, you move. Oh, that's sick. I can get a follower right away. We have a rift crystal. Crushing this fragile crystal creates a small temporary time space rift, which, uh, while also releasing a healing mist, shuffle the item discard pile, then draw three cards from it. Place one card into the inventory of your hero, then discard the other two. And that's something you have to be careful about in this game. Some stuff goes to your hand for the most part. Uh, heal your hero for five, discard this card after it has been used. That's super useful. Uh, and then a survival knife, which might be less useful for me, right? While a character who is equipped with this knife has 12 hit points or lower, they gain plus one damage and plus one speed. That's cool and all, but I've got this pretty sweet, like, stick here that gives me plus 10 hit points, and it's two-handed, so I can't wear, uh, the, the survival knife. So... I think we're ready to get, ready to get started. Uh, let's just take a quick break here, and then we'll, uh, jump in. It just makes for a nice break point for me when I edit this all together. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, all right, here we go. We can. So we're, we're here. We're alone. We've got nothing fancy going on. Start of the turn. Uh, okay. So the first thing that you can do at the start of your turn is that you have the option to get rid of one of these cards, right? So let me see. Do I have that written somewhere? So here's the turn reference. And I kind of jammed a bunch of information on here, like the character factions, just because I don't know what they are offhand. Like this guy is a Celestite on the very bottom one, whatever that is. Uh, there are rules for aggression with some of the characters. So I think it's like if you're a beast, you're aggressive to like everybody or something. And like two aggressives of the same type won't attack each other though, unless they're beasts, right? Like two aggressive plant men or plants won't attack each other. Uh, the turn, the, the, the big green thing over here, this is in the back of all the books. Uh, so that's where that is from. It's very handy. It just gives you a breakdown of what you can do. Even how to combat works. Like really, wow, that's, that's actually very useful. And then in the middle there is just kind of it explained. And I've inserted some of the changes to the rules so that we knew how it worked uh, for solo players. So instead of drawing one card from one stack in a solo game, you draw one from two different stacks, right? So that's, that's step number one. The other thing that you can do, a uh, player may choose to discard one side quest and draw a new one at this time, or they may draw one additional side quest to a maximum of three. Another thing about quests, uh, trade three side quests for a heroic quest. Once per whole game, I can choose to discard these three and, and, and uh, get myself a new one of those. But for now, let's just think what's likely. I don't have a jewel item, right? That, that has like a little jewel symbol in like the character slot, the little like, like this is, has a little body armor icon at the bottom, right? Uh, so I need to find a jewel. What are the odds of me finding a jewel? I don't know. What about the odds of me finding a bow? There's probably two in this whole deck, for all I know. And have your hero or their followers successfully flee from a battle? We can make that happen. So maybe I get rid of... Oh, yeah. There's no guarantee what I'm going to get is any better. And I actually do have 15 points here, don't I? 6, 6, 13, 14, 15. Which is all... We just need to complete these and we can, we can, we can win by then. Okay? So maybe we just stick with what we have for now. We don't know... Who knows? This could be a jewel. I have no idea. Uh, okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to play... Uh, no, we're not going to play anything. What we have to do is 
see there on number one is where we read the book. And to make this as easy as I can, I have this. Instead of me reading this little book and trying to hold it up to the screen, I've got this, the crossroads. All crucial decisions are made at a crossroads. Players begin the game here, placing the tokens or standees that represent their heroes onto this location. Okay, uh, so I'm going to do a free... So, um, you know, the first thing we can do, let's just do it because we can. We can burn a real action and right here, search a location, right? So I'm going to spend my action. I roll 1d6 and I add my mind to it, and I need to score eight or higher to pull this off, right? And that's also right here on this, on the back of the books, on the top right quadrant, search. D6 plus mind, eight or more, choose three items, or draw three, choose one. So what's my mind? Five, I need to roll at least a three. So I've got a 50% chance, ooh! So I've got three plus five is an eight, so I succeeded in searching, fantastic, right? So I'm gonna draw three, one, two, and three. Uh, dang, not one of these is what I want. <laughs> I'm hoping to find some, ooh, I lied. Look at that, there's a bow. Okay, hold on now. <laughs> uh, dang, that's good too. So the moon seed elixir here, this gives me plus two attack for an entire battle. This armor is pretty sweet if I can get it on, but you take damage if you're not an Eggman trying to put it on. So maybe we take the bow because we happen to have a quest. That was very fortunate actually. So let's take the bow into our hand. Uh, or we searched for it, right? So doesn't it go here? So there we go. We're going to equip that. Maybe not. Maybe it goes into your hands. I can't remember now. Where does it go? Does it say choose one? Let's see here. Search. It probably breaks it down here. Uh, draw three. I'm going to choose one to place in the searching character's inventory. Okay, so it doesn't go into your hand. It does go on the guy because the guy found it, right? Okay. Oh, and place a search token there. So I have, I have a couple little things over here to help me remember stuff. And there's that. Okay. So... That's good. Uh, getting more gear is always good, but this location can no longer be searched. Uh, but what we can do is we can play a location. That's the green one here, right? That's location. Uh, I can play for free a location card. So let's put Wesker's Dirt Hole in here. And the way you play a card is you just line up the paths, right? So like this path and that path right there. Uh, this game does not want to be sleeved, by the way. It doesn't fit in the box right. Uh, it doesn't line up on your little... Your little dashboard deal here correctly. Your hero card doesn't fit in the nice little hole you've got. <laughs> uh, these don't fit in the little spots. These are actually cutouts here too. Just, you know, just so you know. Okay, so we played Wesker's Dirt Hole. That's an eight. Back to the PDF, Wesker's Dirt Hole. The hole that Wester, oh, am I saying Wesker? Wester, Wester has dug here contains a matter transfer portal into another dimension, because of course it does. Once per turn for one action point, while a player controlled hero or follower is in this location, their player may roll 1d6 plus their luck score. If seven or lower, the player discards an item from their character's inventory to draw an item into their hand. If 8 to 10, they discard up to two items from their character's inventory to draw the same number of items into their hand. If 11 or higher, they shuffle an item from the characters from their character's inventory into the item deck, drawing any card from the item discard pile into their hand. So that's really cool if I need some more items and whatnot uh, to trade out some items. I kind of like what I have. The bow is exactly what I need uh, to get this quest done. So you know what we need is we need somebody to shoot. I don't want to shoot anybody. Okay, so we can also play a, a person for free, a character card, and I just happen to have a follower here, right? I mean, you start the game with one, one, and two of these, so we're going to play Draken here, right? So this is like Batman. <laughs> this is a Batman <laughs> here. So there's, oh, right there. Okay, so we're going to put, put this guy out here, and he's a follower, so you can have this guy follow you around. On each turn, okay, yeah, right. Uh, three to five, he engages your hero in combat. Oh, dear. Okay, well, maybe, maybe, maybe he's there. Maybe we don't fight the guy. Ooh, that's got some nasty glare. Let's put this guy over here. Well, it looks, this is kind of like my stuff, so I don't, I want to keep that separate. Maybe we'll keep this guy just, he's in play. He's over here. All right, so we could move up there and attempt to, uh, attempt to get a follower on turn one, which seems pretty sweet, right? Why not? Let's have some fun. So one action to move. So I'm up here now. Uh, and then it says follower on each turn in his location, roll 2d6. Okay, does that take an action? 
Followers. A follower role is made by the current player when their hero enters the location of an unclaimed follower. If the unclaimed follower enters the hero's location, or if their hero starts their turn in the location, each follower has specific role requirements. It doesn't say anything about spending AP, though. Okay. Beginning on... Okay, so we'll read the bottom half later on. Any hero can attempt to influence a follower who is allied with another hero. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, so it sounds like it just kind of happens. Like, oh, we just walked in. There's like this bat dude here, Draken. I've never had a follower before, so I don't know. Uh, oh, that's not true. I mean, I had the horse, but I had the horse one game. That was it. Okay, 2d6 plus luck. Let's, let's do it. 2d6 plus 5. My luck is 5. Nine, right? Plus five. Okay, 14. What do I need to roll? 13 or more. <laughs> we barely made that. He joins your hero. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, right? On a 13 or more, he joins your hero. So he has a thing called blink outside of battle for two action points. Roll 2d6 plus luck. If nine or more, he may teleport himself plus one other one to two locations away. Okay, so now I need the space. So let's bring in a hero or a follower board. That's sweet. We got a guy already. He does get two action points to start his turn. We'll put those there. He's got 28 hit points. So here, I'll put him up on the screen while I while I fiddle with the bits here. So we're going to do this. I need, looks like, three cubes. This just helps me if I barricade off their hit points. Oh, wait, I'm going the wrong direction. Well, dang, that's not going to work. All right, well, it just, it helps me if I have, like, a little barricade here so I know not to go beyond whatever. So he has 28 hit points. Uh, he has a 5 speed, a 5 damage. A, the horse didn't do anything, if I recall. Like, it let me move farther, and it let me... Um, have its initiative in combat, but mine was faster <laughs> at the time. I was playing as Kara the Sly, and she was just a beast. Okay, so we got to remember now, outside of battle, for both your action points, roll 2d6 plus luck. If nine or more, he may teleport himself plus one other one or two locations away. Okay, pretty sweet. And you just follow me around now, little little bat guy. Draken, Draken, Draken. Okay, so, I mean, we've got one action point left. We could equip the Rift Crystal. You have an eight card limit down here, by the way. So I've already got five. <sighs> we don't have a single way to get uh, any more or any points this turn. So let's do this. Let's spend our last action to do a search in this location here. So that's a D6 plus mind for an eight or higher. So I got a six. So that's six plus five is 11. So I get to draw three cards, one, two, and three. Three, and I get to keep one. Oh my god! <laughs> Did I not just say earlier there's probably only two bows in this entire deck? I mean, I don't really actually know, but it just is funny to me that I thought this would not happen. So the question now is, which of the the U Y E W or Golden Bow is better? So they're both. Oh, the golden one looks a little bit better just at a glance here. So for one AP, hit a character in an adjacent region for... So that is the same for all bows. Speed shot. Once per battle, roll 1d6 plus speed if 10 or higher. So this one's a little bit better because it has two mind points versus one. Okay, but maybe that's not what I want. There's other stuff here. Is this my card? That's my card. So we have a tactical vest that cannot be used by ghost characters. I am not a ghost. And if I was to equip that, I could switch this out. It's still only one defense, but I gain a strength, a mind, I lose a luck, but I also gain my speed back, which is actually very nice. And what is this? Solar Staff. Photosynthetic medical interface. When equipped, brings the plant... Oh, this thing heals plant people or other people after combat. Okay, that's really good, but... Oh, man. I like that this guy does loads of damage. So maybe... And, and the bow I'm only having because I just want to get the point. So um, let's do that. Let's just take the tactical vest. Let's, let's put it here. Now, equipping and stuff is free, right? So, like, this whole free actions. Trade, give, equip, use, pick up, drop, whatever. Free. So I'm going to just switch out my armors right now, right? So first thing I get back is my one speed point. So then I get plus one of those, minus one luck. 
and plus one mine. So I have four, five, six mines. Yeah, so I have this in my inventory. Now I can drop this whenever, but it might come in handy later. And because I'm not at my card limit, I'm just going to hang on to it for now. So we've used all of our action points. I still have this survival knife, which does me absolutely no good. So we're just going to hang on to it because you never know what you can use it for. We got a follower on turn one. Okay. Um... Yeah, we need a jewel. We got this idiot. Okay. Yeah, we got we got things to do here. Okay. So end of the round, you'll see here, uh, beginning a new round. So phase three is check quest points. We don't have any. Beginning a new round. When all players have completed their turns, the sun token moves one tick, and then everybody heals to two hit point. Uh, heals two hit points. So I I get to go from thirty six to thirty eight, which is pretty fantastic, right? Because remember, I get ten for my stick here. Then. That's funny, I'm going to lose it here as soon as I switch on the bow to, sh to take a shot at somebody. Then, um, you don't need to heal. We get all of these back, and then I have to draw cards again, and I need to really think hard about, about this. Early on in the game, when you're only going six rounds, it might be very beneficial to ditch all three of these to get another big heroic quest card, because um, then you would be able to fill in more of these, but... I feel like these are doable. I really do. So let's just stay with what we have, but we have to draw two cards. So what do we have? We have a stupid item. Let's take a dude and a spot, a location. Okay, so we drew the waterfall pit. Well, that's cool. And we drew Orpal Wanderer, who kind of looks like the wolf man. There we go. All right, not a hero. Oh, it's just like a straight up enemy. Okay, so um, the good news is we can absolutely play both of these. So we're up here, and I need to, I need to find locations to search. We need to make sure that we can get another hero. Yeah, I need gear. I need to get a, a a jewel. I need to shoot somebody with a bow and flee from combat. <laughs> all 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 good things. All right, so let's go up again. And in a typical 12 round game, I've had 10 to 12 cards out here, maybe a little, maybe 15, say 10 to 15 uh, in a six game, five or six it feels like, because you're trying to do so much in such a little amount of time. The waterfall pit. So let's see what this says. Further down the road, you can see a small hill covered in grass and what looks like a clearing. You hear the sound of wildly rushing water, but there is no running water in sight. So the sound seems out of place. A sword clanks against rock in the distance. Then you hear the echo of an otherworldly howl. When a player's hero or follower enters this location, read action 56. Oh, no. Okay. So there's something happening in there. <laughs> oh, we had our follower points. We could have had them fly us back down here. That's okay. Okay, so we are going to... Let's, let's just walk up there and see what happens, right? So... We're there. Now this says 0056. Have we read this yet? No. So there's the green book, right? So there's there's the location, like description book, and then like the like this is kind of like a choose your own adventure book, right? So we're about to find out what 56. It's a 056. And again, you see the genius in this? There's a B set of books. And so the storyline here is going to be completely different in those books. And you know, he could just make other books stories right it's amazing i don't like the amount of glare i have going on over here with this guy i apologize maybe we can get him at an angle so it's not reflecting the light so bad there we go okay so let's see what 56 says 56 says you walk into the field towards the sound of rushing water and almost step into a gaping hole in the ground Okay. Oh yeah, that's what the card shows even. It was hidden from view, obstructed by a low hill. A beam of sunlight illuminates what looks like an underground river below. It's very dark down there, but you catch a glimpse of a shining object below. Then you notice a shadow dart through the light. Oh no. If someone hasn't already done so, you may jump down into the pit or inspect the pit. <sighs> well... I'm not just jumping down a hole when I don't know what's down there. <laughs> um, or does whatever is down there take the item from me, right? I, I assume it's an item, right? Didn't it say a, sh a, a thing is down there? Like I saw a glint of shine. Oh, yeah. Gl glimpse of a shining object below. Then you notice a shadow dart through the light. If someone... So oh, man. Do we jump down into the pit or inspect it? Let's... You know what? We're a man of action today. Let's do it. 61. Oh! 
You leap into the pit, attempting to land on a large rock below. Oh no, roll 2d6 plus luck plus speed. So we have, oh god, that was the best roll ever. Look at that, I got a 12 plus all these points. Okay, way over 14. Uh, if your roll is 14 or higher, read action 58. So we gotta go to 58. The jump down was farther than you expected. You take a d6 damage, but manage to land on the rock. Three damage, so one, two, three. 35 hit points. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, mm, uh, land on a rock in the middle of the river. Though you are injured, you are still able to leap from the rock onto the nearby riverbank. There is a shiny object half buried in here. Draw one item card, then read action 64. So, yeah, this is useless, right? Like, I've got... Well, this one gives me hit points, but that one gives me more first strike, which is pretty, 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 pretty good. I actually like that better, I think, because they're both plus four. I mean, they're the same otherwise, though. It's just that this gives me an edge in combat, and I don't have the hit points for it yet. I can always switch that out later. Okay, so uh, draw one item card, then read action 64. 64 says, you turn and then instantly freeze in place. Oh, here's the, the, the flip side of the coin. Draw the Grathorn, then shuffle. So somewhere in the characters here is something called Grathorn then, huh? Let's find Grathorn. I don't see it. Grathorn, okay, so here's a Grathorn, whatever this horrendous looking thing is. <clears throat> then shuffle. If it is in hand, reveal it and place it here. I don't. If it's already been played, read 65. About 20 paces from where you stand, there is a hulking creature. It wavers as it rises, looking away from you, seemingly staring at the pit wall. Suddenly, it throws itself headfirst into a metallic mineral deposit. This is the clanging noise you heard earlier. The beast ravenously consumes pieces of ore that fall to the ground. It has not seen you yet, but soon will. At the beginning of your next turn, it will stop feeding and attack anyone in this location. You may use the nearby ladder to easily exit the pit, then move to another location as usual. So this guy sucks. So now I need to find... What does he look like? This guy right here. Okay, so this guy's in the pit. Oh, wow. So this guy's in the pit. So we're, I think we're golden here. Let's see what we've got. So not quite so golden there, buddy. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We can we can play this and just swap our gear immediately. And the only difference is, is my hit points are once again limited to 36, that's fine. I want it for the first strike in case I wind up getting into combat, right? Other, other than that, the stats are the same. Plus four, all that good stuff. The problem I have, oh, buddy, look at this guy. Okay, so. Did I, did I play the, the pit and forget to play the card? I think I did. Okay. Wander. At the beginning of each round, roll 1d6. If the roll is 1 to 3, it moves one location. But I can drop this guy. Notice at the very bottom of that card, it says aggressive. I can pit these two idiots against each other. I like that idea. Before I do anything, right? Um, but you have to play a card in an adjacent spot. So I can't do that just yet. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to pay for drawing a card. And I'm going to draw a location card, right? Well, bam. What is this? The diamond mine. Okay. And I'm going to put this. It has to be adjacent. So I'm going to put this right here. Well, I guess I can put it like that. It's probably better. Okay. 15, that says, in the other book. So we're going to read 15. This is a lot of words for this one. It goes to the second page. The farmhouse ahead has been converted into a mill. It refines the diamonds extracted from the mine below it. The mine is overseen by two repulsive creatures known as the Dirt Twins. Move the Dirt Twins here if they are in play. If players have them in hand, place them here. If undrawn, draw and place them at the mine, then shuffle. So I need characters, Dirt Twins. The Dirt Twins. So now we're gonna go through Here's a dirt twin. Okay, that was easy to find. I mean, the guy is... Look at that. The dirt twins. <laughs> uh, move... Okay, two percent to see if players have been hand. Place them here. If undrawn, draw and place them at the mine, then shuffle. Equip as necessary. So we have equipment. Draw the dirt twin sword. So I need all kinds of crap then, right? 
Oh my god, and they both have two pieces of gear. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Marvin's Stabber and the Blade Staff. Well, here's Marvin's Stabber. I need a Blade Staff, Fox Bone Tincture. Fox Bone Tincture, Blade Staff, and a Square Wooden Shield. Square Wooden Shield. So I, I need a Fox Bone Tincture and a Sword, huh? Wait, no. The Blade Staff. The Blade Staff. So this is the one... You spend a lot of time digging through cards in this game. Blade Staff. Did I just skip right? The Farm Blade. Is that what they're after? What's it called? The Dirt Twin Sword. Oh, no. The Dirt Twin Sword is literally what it's called. Okay, so I've skipped something. I need a blade. Oh, is that what I have? I have the Blade Staff. Sucks to be you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Wow, what luck. Then that So that one's a little bit weaker than the others. Okay, so draw the Dirt Twin Sword. I don't lose it. He just doesn't get it. Uh, from the item deck or discard. Oh, or discard. Is there another blade up here? No. Okay. Uh, reveal from a player's hand and then place it into any map location. Oh, wait. So the sword or reveal from a player's hand. So it goes onto a map location already dropped. Okay. If already held by a character or remains in their possession, the twin sense the sword and will advance towards it, each moving one location per new game round towards the sword. Toward the sword. A twin in the same location as the as the dropped sword picks it up and equips it. They become aggressive toward a character in their location who holds it. If one of the twins defeats a character holding the sword in combat, they take it and equip it. After one of them acquires it, they both make their way back to the mine, moving one location per game round. While there, the twins will attack anyone trying to search the diamond mine. Okay. Terrific. So we have a bunch of crap out here now. Look at this. Look, this game gets huge. So I might actually move my little tokens over a bit. We'll put the twins out here. So this guy has a fox bone tincture. This guy has a sword and a shield, right? Marvin's stabber and a shield. Okay. So that one's the harder one to fight for sure, because I don't think they use gear in combat anyway. I think they just like bang on you. Like it's like it's not they're not smart, I don't think. Uh, I don't know, maybe. We'll have to, to double check how that ooh, there's a nasty glare right there. I don't want that. Okay, so then we have this horrendous thing. Then we have to find the tokens for these two guys. They are here and here, and they are at the mine. And then we need to find <laughs> what I do with the sword. Okay, then there's the sword. We'll put that here, and I'll put a number one here, and I'll put uh where did it say it has to go? Place it into any map location. Dropped. It doesn't say, why don't I just put it right there and just never go to the diamond mine? Because forget those dudes, right? I mean, that's an option. And these guys are weird, right? That's right. I read these cards. That's right. That's right. That's right. At the beginning of the... Okay. If you can't... And they're immortal. You can't kill these guys like you can everybody else. Instead of dying, they become unconscious like a player character does. At the beginning of the next round, his body teleports to the diamond mine after it has been played, if it's not in play, and he awakens fully healed. 39 hit points. These guys are beasts. I don't want to mess with them at all. And this sword is not that great, right? The Dirt Twins will search for this sword and will do almost anything to acquire it. it requires 5 strength or it is two-handed. I mean, it's okay. Okay, so anyway, we'll we'll throw it, um, we'll put it in the crossroads. Let, let those idiots do some, some walking, right? Why not? Oh, they're not going to be... <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to be able to get past this guy because this dude is going to start attacking people that are in this zone starting next round. Oh, this game is amazing. What do you do? What do you do? Okay, so... <laughs> so now, um, I say we move. Um, wait a minute. Why do I want to do this? Let's search the pit that we're in, okay? Plus mind is six, so I gotta roll a one or a two. Uh, three plus six is nine, uh, or I can't roll a one, rather, I guess. So I'm gonna find three items, one, two, and three. We're gonna put a search marker here because I gotta leave this spot. All right, so we found, ooh. So I found the same crap armor I already have, so I'm already gonna discard that because we've already replaced it with better armor. We have, I like that. 
the Gorgon Berry Tonic. For two action points, heal 20 hit points. This bitter tonic fatigues those who drink it, but it heals the wounds of battle in an almost magical way. I like being able to not die. This is super cool. That is a helmet. Regenerative aura. Heals one hit point per turn outside of battle. Okay. Enhanced division. Plus one to first strike. Man. Um, these are both fabulous. I actually think I'm going to take... Oh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to take this and equip it, I think. Dang. Uh, so that gives me another armor. So we're at plus two armor. Another strength. So we're at seven. Another mind. And then I get to heal once per turn outside of battle. I don't know if that counts this turn or not, but whatever. Okay, so that was good, right? We searched. Now we need to get out. Let's take our bat buddy here. Uh, outside of battle for two action points. I'm going to spend both his action points. Roll 2d6 plus luck. His luck is 3. So we got 10. Uh, if nine or more, he may teleport himself plus one other one to two locations away. So he and I are going to teleport right over there, and we are completely out of action points. And I guess that's the end of the round. No. Oh, okay. So, man, there's so much we can do here. Okay, so, like, we could totally drop this guy in this zone and fight this guy. Let's do it, right? Right? We didn't play this. A character, right? So we're going to play this guy, the Orpal Wanderer. We're going to see some combat now between NPCs, not even us. The first time I played this game, I had found, like, some guy's castle, and then that guy happened to have a sword called, like, Egg Cracker or something, and it did extra damage to egg creatures. And in my hand, I had an item that was, that was an Eggman, and I dropped him on there, and he was aggressive, and they fought. The Eggman had to flee, because if they're, like, less than 15 hit points, they run from combat. He ran back to the crossroads where I was standing there and aggroed me. It was amazing. At the beginning of each round, roll a d6. If the roll is 1 to 3, moves one location. Oh, he wanders around. Oh, wow. Okay. Non-ghost faction characters who fight it suffer 1d6 at the start of the next game's round. How do you track all this crap? Okay, so yeah, we're going to play this guy in this location here since we're over here now, right? So now we have this amazing problem where I'm going to need cards. So these cards are... I'm going to use these for hit points. This guy has 28 hit points this guy has 46 hit points neither one of them have any um oh they're both aggressive neither one of them uh have any um gear feral but they have like abilities right so at the beginning okay so first of all when it attacks roll a d6 if four or higher increase the damage it deals by the number rolled so i'm gonna take here i have an extra die we'll use this for this guy uh, inflicts ignores armor bonus. He has stone skin damage from swords reduced by four. So this guy doesn't have a sword, so we don't have to worry about it. So this guy has plus eight damage. He has an eight right here on his strength. This guy, the Orpal Wanderer, has at the beginning of each round roll one d six. If it's one to three, it moves. Oh no, that's wandering. No, let's see here, disease. Uh, non ghost faction. That's that is this guy. Suffer 1d6 damage at the start of the next game round. So he might get, like, you know, a little bit of poison-type damage thing. So, okay. So we'll just have to, like, remember that somehow. Uh, we'll put that there. Okay. So so first is going to be initiative. So let's see here. We're going to roll for the Grathorn first. So that's an 8 plus 4. And then we'll roll for, for uh, the, the Wanderer here. And he's going to be plus 5. So he has a 6, 7, 8. Plus 5 is 13. And 8 plus 4... Oh, good. Okay, so the, the Wolfman guy goes first, right? <laughs> the Wanderer. <laughs> uh, then he is going to do... We're going to do... Suffer 1d6 damage at the start of the next round. So let's just get that out of the way so that we don't forget to do that later. So one point of damage is going to happen later. So we're just going to mark off one hit point here, right? I mean, I, God, I don't know if it's even worth it, but we'll just mark that one hit point. It's going to go away. That way we don't have to worry about his disease ability anymore. Uh, now, combat, and this guy's plus six damage. Neither one of them have armor, so we're gonna roll. We're gonna find ourselves at, uh, what did I say, plus six, so 13 damage. So we're gonna go 43, 33. So this guy has 33 hit points. Now this guy, roll a d6, if four or higher, increase the damage by that much. So you rolled a three, so this doesn't count. And we roll a what? A five damage? That's, no, five plus uh, eight. Yeah, so 13 damage. So 1, 2, 3, and two, 10. Down to 15 hit points. Back to the Wolfman. Whoa. 
Wolfman rolls a 5 plus 6 is 11, so boom, boom, down to 22. And then this guy is going to attack again. See, combat's very straightforward. Uh, we got a 1, so no bonus damage. We rolled an 8 plus 8 is 16. This guy has 15 hit points. The Wolfman has died. <laughs> okay, right, so nice and easy. Wolfman is dead. Uh, I keep calling him Wolfman. Look at him. He's the Wolfman. Uh, the Orpal Wanderer. So this guy died. He had no gear, but he, he served a purpose, right? He weakened this guy for us. I like that. Okay, so then, what else do we have here? We have, we'll get that out of the way for now. This guy's going to take a damage here at the start of the turn. Oh, all these things happen. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. And these idiots walk. That's the end of the turn, I do believe. So, new round is coming up, right? So, we're going to move this here. Now, this guy takes a point of damage because he was poisoned. Great. That's done. These two guys move this way, and we're about to have a combat here now, which I have to figure out somehow. I don't know how that all works. We have all of our points back. We have to do whatever this quest is uh, and draw our cards. So let's draw a location and an item, and then read this quest. Okay, draw cards until you find a hero. We got this guy drawn in two game rounds. That's now at the beginning of the round, or whenever possible, place them into an empty location. So this guy just spawned somewhere, and unfortunately, the only empty location I have, this is so crazy, um, looks like it's over here. Okay, so we're going to put that guy over there, and now we need to go kill Robot Man. Where are you, Robot Man? Oh, he's a hero. Oh, we have to go kill Robot Man. He's down here, in, in the hole. <sighs> okay, buddy. All right, so now I think we caught up on everything we had going on this turn. The only other thing that I can do here is something over here with these. Now, oh, and before we even start, this combat happens. Oh, dear. Okay, <laughs> so what we have to do now is figure out how the follower combat, or not uh, aggressive, like how, do the, how, does, how does combat work if it's multiple people in there, though, right? Uh, winning combat, combat in a location is aggressive. It's directed by a location event. One player calculates roles for their hero in or follower. Most fa ah, subtract the armor bonus when attacking first. Use a character. I, I don't know if they both attack him or what. Like, does he attack just one and then the other? Do they attack at the same time? Uh, I might need to figure that out. Fleeing from combat, a consciousness roll. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot to think about here because, because now we have an aggressive guy in here with these two guys, and so I just don't know off the top of my head how the combat works. I'm sure it's here, and I'm sure I've read it. I just haven't ran into it yet, so you know when you don't have a second to, to practice it, you kind of forget about it. Um, let me take a quick scan through the manual and just see if there's anything here. Uh, there is... This page on combat, one player can't bring hero and or follower. Come out only two or more characters and resolve in two parts, two or more characters. So it sounds like everybody's going to fight. So at the beginning of the round, all characters, so everybody gets attacked. Roll to determine battle. So it's going to be those two, it sounds like, versus the one guy. Let's do it that way, right? I, I think that's correct, right? The two brothers aren't going to fight each other. They're not aggressive to each other. They're aggressive to... They're not aggressive to anybody. This guy's aggressive to both of them. So let's go ahead and roll initiative for the guy on the left. He's got 8 plus 4 is 12. Guy on the right... Oh, he has 13. He has plus 1 more. 3 plus 5 is 8. So 8 and 13. 13, 8... 8 plus 4 is 12. So, oh, geez. Okay, so it's going to be 1, I think it was 2 and, th or 1, 2 and 3. So this is going to be our combat roll, I guess. Here, I will use this to know whose turn it is. So this guy, I believe, goes first. And he has some stuff here, man. This guy has, this guy's got the sword. If a character's base is, base strength is 2 to 4 before this sword is equipped, his is 6. Give that character an additional strength upon equipping the sword. Holy cow. Okay, so this guy has... Oh my god, I have so many things going on here to track now. So this guy I'll have... Here, instead of using those cards, I'm going to use the tokens just to keep track. It'll be easier. 39 hit points. Oh, that guy has... Oh, no, that's a heal. Okay. 
and six. That guy's just going to go punch him. I think that's good enough for now. So this guy's going to go first. Those are my combat orders, but I still need another friggin' die <laughs> to roll for this guy's bonus damage. <laughs> okay, so this guy's going to attack this guy first, and he gets a bonus of six, seven, eight, nine. Is this a sword? It's a stabber. <sighs> See, they don't have keywords on these things. You're just supposed to kind of look, and that looks like a knife to me. That looks kind of like a like a big knife. It's a like this is a sword. This looks like a bit of a knife. So I just don't know if it's a sword or not. It does, well, it does two damage, so maybe, like two bonus damage. So maybe it is a sword. Ah, uh, I just have to make this call. Let's, let's, let's call it a sword, right? Because this guy is minus four damage to swords. So this guy's only going to get a bonus of plus four. So, that, oh, I can actually do that, right? Because it's six, seven, eight. Um, and this guy ignores armor anyway. So yeah, this is brutal. Okay, so here we go. This plus four. Holy smokes, 15 damage to 21. So you're down to six hit points. They're going to kill this guy. Uh, so now this guy, I guess he attacks this guy with the higher stats uh, and possibly bonus damage. Uh, so we have, ooh, 11, 19, 24 damage. Holy cow, right? Because it's, it's eight plus those plus this, right? So that's 10, 16, plus 8. So 24 damage. Holy smokes. Yeah, combat in this game goes kind of fast because people do, you know, so much damage. So 24 damage. Bang. All right, so then this guy is going to attack here, and he has, what, a plus 6? And he does not have a sword. He's just punching, it looks like, because I have his spear or whatever. Uh, so there's 11 plus 6 is 17. I think that guy's dead now. Wow. Okay, so we're going to call him dead. This guy's dead. There's our initiative dice. Good thing I had those laying around, yeah? Uh, he doesn't have anything. He's just, just this angry guy down here. Okay, so yeah. Even, without, even with the 4 extra damage, he wouldn't have died in one round, so that was still going to add up to be exactly how it needed to work out. So good job, twins. You killed this guy. He was not a nice-looking dude anyway. And he was aggressive. And you guys are not aggressive to me, so guess what? Because I need to get here now and fight this guy, right? So we're at the top of the round. That was the first thing that happened was that, that battle. So we can, we can deal with this. Now, this guy stays injured, and as the day progresses, they heal. Oh, yeah, I would have healed. There we go. So we're on day... Are we on day three? Did I just do day three? Yeah, I guess so. We just started day three. Okay. So <clears throat> this is useless. I can put this out while I'm here, but I kind of don't want to. Once I come back down here, I might not come back up here um, because I'm going to let these guys grab the sword and go back home, and I don't want to mess with them because they become aggressive when they're up there with their own sword. So perhaps we search because we're up here. I don't know why I'm searching so much. Am I looking for something? I mean, I could get some... Better armor, maybe. Oh, and this heals me anyway outside of combat. So, yeah, I'm max hit points again. So let's, um... God, this game is so nuts. There's so much cool stuff happening here. And it just tells such a fun little tale. Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, I'm looking for... That's right, a jewel. Okay, so let's do this. Let's let's do a search. 1d6 plus 7. So I, <laughs> I can't lose this. How do I have 7? Four, five, six, seven. So I can literally roll a one and have an eight or higher. Uh, there's a what? A three, right? To search. Okay, good. I'm a brainiac. Oh, there's another bow. Apparently there's a lot of bows in this game. I've just never seen them. I am looking for a jewel. I need to find a jewel. None of these are jewels. Um, I mean, maybe I'm just bow man, right? Egg cracker. Hey, look, golden sword. So maybe, what do we have? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight items. I have to drop something on the ground where I am anyway. Um, maybe I just drop a bow there. I don't know. Oh, wow. Look at this thing. Temporal beacon. Future sight. Plus one to first strike. Temporal matter transfer. When equipped for one AP, roll one D6. If it rolls five, six, draw any one item from the item discard pile into your hand. Now, the problem is I can't carry all this crap. What I can do, though, is drop stuff. I'm going to drop the body armor right here. And I know there's, there's little... Things I can use for it, but I'm just going to put it under the card. Just I'm never going to go for this thing. Uh, I already have better armor, so I'm just going to say that I dropped that here. Now, we are going to switch 
our gear and equip our bow. I'm just going to get this. Oh, no, I'm not. How do I do this? Is this guy aggressive? No. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's just get this out of the way. Let's get some points here. We're already halfway through this, okay? So we're going to equip the bow, which means my stats are about to change. Um, my luck will change to be four. It's already four. So I'm just going to say that we just unequipped our this thing, and we equipped that. So my stats are a little bit different now. Um, I'm only at plus one. Uh, so, oh no, and then I'm one strength less. So I'm at, a, I'm at just a straight roll, it looks like, I guess, huh? For damage, what does this do? No. Basically, I'm going to spend one point. Oh, i got to put a search marker there. I'm going to spend one point to use the action of my bow. So if you look there, it says range for one action point, which I just spent, hit a character in an adjacent location for 2d6 damage. Beautiful. I'm going to shoot this guy who's already injured. I might kill him. Well, I rolled two sixes. Homeboy. Uh, <clears throat> 30. He has two hit points left. <laughs> Let's go 30, and then we'll take one away and make it a 5, 35, 36 damage on him. Wow. He has 38 hit points. <clears throat> okay. And then... Uh, I don't remember why that was there now, but I don't think he needs... Oh, I was doing the math for the other guy. Okay. Now roll a d6 plus my luck. My luck is 4. So 2 plus uh, 4 is 6. If 6 or less, they move into your location and attack you. <gasps> oh, crap. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Now I'm in combat with this guy. Oh, he has two hit points, though. Whatever. He'll die and respawn right where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speed shot. Once per battle, roll a d6 plus speed. If 10 or higher, after taking a battle turn, take a second battle turn. So this is how I went into combat, so I should probably adjust all my stats, right? Just so it's correct. So I don't have this, don't have that. This is here. I do have this bow, which is plus one here, plus one here, uh, and then only a one here. So we'll say plus one. Okay, so that's what our stats really look like. Okay. Uh, what we have to do now is beat this guy on initiative. He is plus five. So he rolled a six plus five is 11. I am plus five as well. So I had nine plus five. So I beat him in initiative. Uh, I almost don't have to roll to do two points of damage because I gain, I, I do seven damage if I roll a zero, right? <laughs> so there's the damage. <laughs> 11 I rolled, okay? 11, 12, plus six is 18. Minus one, 17 damage, this guy dies. I killed your brother. What up now? Holy cow. I wonder if his brother got mad. Like, the alive brother gets pissed now, right? Okay, so this guy dies in this spot, and he drops all his crap right there. I should have fleed from combat so I could get this other thing done. So this guy died, but he's just going to respawn right there anyway next round, right? At the beginning of the next round, his body teleports to the diamond mine, and, he, and yeah, and he's fully healed. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll just leave him right there, and he'll just be one spot behind his brother. Okay, now we're going to use our bat. We're going to use both action points to do his teleport thing. Oh, the whole point of that was this. I gained my first quest point. Use a bow to hit a character <laughs> in an adjacent location. You don't fill it up immediately. I have to wait till next round. Um... So we're going to use our bat here that says, roll 2d6 plus luck. My luck is, ooh, do I want to switch my gear before that? Yeah, let's switch back. I only had the bow to get that one thing done. In fact, I can drop, well, let's keep it. Uh, so this, again, is uh, minus one, goes back to a four, though. Uh, minus one speed, minus one mind, but then, so four, five, six attack, seven attack. Uh, and then plus one mind. Four, five, six, seven mind. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're back the way we are. We're back with our... F oh, this was a plus one first strike as well. So yeah, glad I got that. Going first in combat is a massive, massive thing in this game. Okay. Blink. Outside of battle for two action points. I just spent... Uh, roll 2d6 plus luck. My luck is four. I rolled an eight plus four is twelve. All right. Or is it the follower's luck? 
I think it's the followers look. <laughs> uh, so it's plus three. So what did I roll then? Six? I rolled an 11. <clears throat> so 11 and 12 are the same. Uh, let's see here, right? Oh no, outside of battle for two AP, roll 2d6 plus luck. If it's his luck, we rolled an 8, 9, 10, 11. If nine or more, he may teleport himself plus one other one to two locations away. No, we were good. I was reading the wrong thing. Okay, so two locations away. Guess what? One, two. Look who's here. Okay, look at what we've still got. Action points. Okay, <laughs> so now, now, I think we're in pretty good shape, right? Okay, I'm going to use my last action point to engage in combat with, with the, the dread robot with with arnold here the terminator okay so he's got i can't believe he got such a burly weapon though okay so this guy is going to get a plus seven to his damage he has no armor bonus corrupt program wow uh okay on his turn roll 1d6 if one or two at no cost he must move one location if possible oh i didn't know that what do you mean on his turn? But he's a hero. It's not like he gets a turn. Oh, wow. Hold six items. Re oh, it's like he gets to, maybe gets to move for free. I don't think any of this applies for it being like an NPC, though. On his turn, he doesn't have a turn. Huh. I don't think any of that actually applies. I think that this guy is just going to get, hopefully, murdered by us. Okay, but he does have this awesome sword, though, that gives him plus three... Plus five damage, really, because he has... Oh, my God. So he's actually plus nine to his damage. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He is plus nine to his damage. Are you serious? Holy smokes. Here, we'll give him plus nine so I remember it. But then we have a two armor. So it's really only... Well, let's do that. We'll just... Well, no, because then I'll forget it. Okay. So he's at plus nine on his rolls for damage. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards... <clears throat> I feel like I should have dropped something at some point just to, well, I don't know. I think we're good. Well, it's too late now. We're here. We've engaged in battle. There's our last point coming at you. Yeah, I'm in a bad spot, actually. Okay, so let's roll for initiative. So my initiative roll is going to be plus four, it looks like. Oh, plus six. I have, I have two here. So four, five, six. So I have 15, and he's plus four. 15, so we get to roll again, okay? Minus plus six. Ooh, so 13. Nine plus four. 13. <laughs> Fine, I'll roll me again. Six. So I have 12. Wow, I keep getting worse. I'm getting slower. 12, and he had seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so we're gonna go first. Yes, I'd use my fingers there, because man. Okay, so we get to go first. That's good. All right, so us. We're going to go first. Boom, right here. In combat. So what do we what have we got? We have... Oh, I forgot. We have, like, sweet combat abilities, too. This guy's screwed, right? Twice per battle, once per battle round, add a D6 to his attack damage. So I'm going to take this for me. Okay. All right. So we're going to attack first. And what are we at for a bonus? Just four? Four, five, six, seven. So we're at plus 11 damage. And we're rolling all of this. I don't know why I'm using a pink one when I have. <laughs> I have plenty of dice. <laughs> okay, so there's my four. So Wow, I rolled horribly, though. Six, seven, that's it. So seven damage uh, plus my bonus of seven is 14 plus four is 18 damage. Okay, uh, so I need a way to count this. 18... Let's do this. Let's act. You know, I really like the little chits instead, so, right? I, I don't know why. I just like calculating damage this way. It's just, it seems like it's it's nice. Okay, so we have 18 damage on this guy. Boom. Now he attacks back. I gotta remember, I have an extra die one more time. He attacks back and he's a plus nine minus two, right? Yeah. Oh my god. So he's at 18 minus two is 16 damage. So I go from 36 to 20. Holy cow, that was him. Now we go back to me. My last time of using an extra die. Why do I roll poorly for me and great for them? So I'm at 11, right? 7 plus 4 is 11. Uh, 15, 18 again. So there's 36 damage total. So he only has 32 hit points. 
I feel like we barely made it out of that one. Okay, so there we go. He's dead. That's great news for us because not only does this guy go away, this goes away, and then we have this fat sword sits here. I don't know. This is, yeah, this is a fabulous sword. Um, it's just laying here now, and I kind of want to pick it up, but I have too much garbage. Um, let's say that we dump this thing and switch them out. So now this thing is just here. And again, you're supposed to use these little other tokens, and yeah, they're great and all that. I just, I don't know. It's just easy enough for me to do that. Okay. I, yeah, I like this, because if I can get another decent one-handed something, I could do better than the blade staff, I think, right? Uh, don't we have a... I guess not. Yeah, it's just it just seems like it's nice to have that option. Because it's plus three damage. Well, plus five. That's right. This thing is burly. That's plus five. This is plus five. Ooh, maybe I use this anyway. And then that opens up another hand spot. I have everything I have is two-handed. <laughs> of course it is. Okay. So we'll just keep that for now. What have I got in my hand? A survival knife, right? Because that would just give two more damage there. Ooh, maybe that's not a bad idea. But then i got to start dropping stuff. And I don't really want to start dropping stuff. Uh, but what I do need to do is take a look at, you know, how hurt we are. We only have 20 hit points right now. So I can I can drink this and fill up to... Th I'm going to do it. Okay, and th there's a good reason why here. Let's, um, let's switch gear again. I feel like this is... Diablo, like, you know, like an action RPG game. I'm like, wait, I need my hit point gear. That unlocks my hit points uh, maximum. I'm going to do this first. Then I'm going to drink this, plus 20 HP. So I go from 20 to 40, right? Then it says gain one action point, so I'm going to take this. I needed that. This guy was spent because we flew. So I need that for a good reason, because I can now use that to move, right? So I can't... So, oh, let's stop and take a look at our quests here for a second. Um, oh, I completely forgot to do this first. <sighs> Whenever you're in the same location as another hero, including the crossroads, once per hero, until you find the traitor, roll 1d6 plus mind. If the, to if the total is 10 or higher, let's just see what I got. A 6 plus my mind. Yeah, so I would have done it. Okay, oh, what a retcon. I have to do this because this is the reason why I put that guy there. I found out he's the traitor. Right? My roll was 10 or higher. It was 6 plus 7. <laughs> right? Uh, he's the traitor. I knew it was that guy, so I gained a 2 points. Then I defeated him in combat. That was the whole point, was to go down there and get both these quests done, and I didn't do the one die roll I had to. So, you know what? We knew you were the traitor. I just realized it. <laughs> the reason why I did that is because I needed to do both of these, right? Because then this one says, a renowned hero, be it by mistake, right? Blah, blah, blah. Draw cards so you find a hero. That was that hero. There's no reason why it couldn't be the same hero, I don't think. So that's 12. So that puts me at 13. <laughs> that was the reason why I did it. And then forgot to do the thing. This heals me, gives me an action point. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I can take one action point to move down back to the crossroads. Um, oh, the Dirt Twin sword is there. Oh, no way. The Dirt Twins will search this sword. Requires five strength or it's two-handed. Wait a second. If I pick this thing up, that's way burlier than my little stick. Oh, you know what? Let's have some fun with the Dirt Twins today. Let's do it. Okay, hold up. I'm going to drop this one, even though I like it so much, the first strike one. And we're going to pick up the Dirt Twin sword because I can equip both of these swords. <laughs> this guy is a murderer because they're one-handed. The Dirt Twins are going to follow me forever, but it requires uh, six strength or is two-handed, requires five or is two-handed. I have a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine strength. Boom, right? Okay, then here, I have to redo all my stats anyway now because everything's all messed up. This is not right either. Okay, uh, so we have four speed, five speed, and then we have mind is four, five, six, seven. Luck, we have four, five, so five luck, and we are at plus six damage now. <laughs> So it doesn't it doesn't go that high, I don't think, right? None of these are that high. They should have made higher ones. I didn't even punch them all out. Yeah, they should have just made higher ones. Okay, so there's there's all that. Uh, but now I also lose my hit point bonus, so I'm actually just back down to my normal maximum, which is which is fine. That's fine. This guy's gonna kill everybody in like one hit. Wow. Okay, we're good. Now 
The reason why I did that is because remember, I have a location. And I can play a location card for free because I haven't done so yet. That's my little green one. So I'm going to put Haglor's Haunted Curve into play. Okay, that's what that looks like. And I can put that over here, over here, or down here. So let's go ahead and put that right down here. I don't have a jewel. So see, here's my problem now. I have no quests, right? Nothing I can do. Have your hero or their followers successfully flee from a battle? Maybe I'll run from one of these guys at some point. But I need a jewel, and then we can end it. But I've got to have that done here pretty soon. Uh, so that is 19 in the blue book. Haglor's Haunted Curve. You hear a ghostly whisper. Your fate changes. Draw one character or location card into your hand upon placing this location. The old be Okay, do I take a dude or a location? Let's take a location. Uh, this is the robot's castle. Okay. Um, draw one character or location card into your hand upon placing the location. The old vehicle on the road ahead has been imbued with a dark curse. Only ghost faction characters and those holding the ghost sword or the phantom blade, I have none of that, uh, can pass through this place without harm. Any other characters instantly sustain a d6 damage upon entering and a d6 damage each turn as long as they remain in this location. Um, wow, that's just it? Like, I just take damage if I try to get into this place? How garbage is that? Oh, man. Okay, well, that's okay. I can't move yet, but I, next turn I'll have three. Okay, let's end it now. End of our turn. So this guy gets his actions back. I get my actions back. I can't heal two. None of these guys are injured, but they do move now, right? Boom, because they're coming for me. <laughs> um, and then I get to draw two cards. So let's draw... I mean, I just drew a location. Maybe I, maybe I take... An item, yes, and uh, dude, look at the art on this guy, forehead man. Okay, do you see what I got? Pow, pow. okay, so now we're gonna roll that forward. Equip a jewel and keep it equipped for two game rounds. So I have to equip this somehow. Two, four, six, seven, eight cards. I can equip this because I can equip a jewel as well. It gives me plus one armor. This game is so wild. Plus one armor, plus one mind, plus one luck. The vision shard. Distant vision. When equipped for one action point, when equipped for one action point, roll a d6 plus luck. If the roll is eight or higher, draw three location cards, take one into your hand, and shuffle the rest back. It doesn't matter. I just want the points. So now, I want to mark... That and that, right? For two game rounds. This will be round one, that'll be round two, and then I'm gonna get the points and we're gonna, we can absolutely end this if now I can flee from combat. So let's see what happens. Oh, I get another quest too, at the start. Uh, what's that I see? Pick up an item dropped by a character that you don't control. Crud. <laughs> uh... Didn't this guy die and drop all his crap? Yes, so he's way back there now. <laughs> um, but you know what I want to do? Is I want to murder this idiot. That's what I want to do. I all... Oh. You know what? I don't need to flee if I can kill. Right? Why run when you can stab? Right? That's, that's today's lesson. And this guy is a hero, so he's a beast, right? This guy is a monster. 40 hit points, he's got all this stuff. Equips the heavy blade. You know who's wearing the heavy blade? This guy. So he's already got plus six damage. This idiot doesn't... Oh, he has plus six damage too. Um, but doesn't do anything. Like, he's just going to teleport away and only have... Well, he's 39 hit points, so I guess it's kind of a wash, yeah? Um, yeah, maybe. And, and, and I kind of like having him in my hand... The robot's castle. We just killed the robot. Isn't that the robot? The guy that we, we killed? Peregrad Dell or whatever his name is here? I think he's the robot. I don't know. We would have to play this card and find out. I've played this game like six times now, and I've never seen these characters. I mean, I've seen I see these guys every game for some reason. <laughs> um, but uh, other than that, yeah, this is all new to me. It's, it's just fantastic. It's, this is the base game box. Why would I get tired of this? Like, how many times did you have to play to not stop having, like, way super interesting stories? This game is fantastic. All right, let's do this. 
I mean, we have an option here, and I'm, I'm going to say that this is a bad move, but we could pitch all three of these and take another heroic quest. The problem is, these always require finding a certain character card or something, going to certain places that may not be in the game. It's a whole thing. These, since we're only going to 15 by the end of that round, all I need is one more point, and then this one, as long as nobody steals my jewel, we're good. So... Dropped by a character that you don't control. That guy doesn't... I don't think he picks up his crap. I think he just dies and just mindlessly walks towards the thing. I could teleport... Well, I could try to fly over here. And... Because uh, I got kind of stuck by the ghost. Like, what happens if we bring the robot bat man back into the, into the fray, right? Oh, and they're following me now. So if I go back here, this idiot... Oh, God, is going to come after me. Okay, we're going to use this to walk, no, 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 let's do this, let's do, didn't I have a, what did I do with it? Oh, I threw it away. <laughs> this card, the robot's castle, you know what, I'm here, I have connectors for free, let's do the location, green, I can put this here, this is a dead end, so let's just put it over here like so, the robot's castle is number seven, that's in the blue book, so that says, Someone or something is standing at the door to this castle. Draw one... Oh, I thought it might be a robot. Draw one character or take a character from your hand. If they are weapon holding, draw them two additional items from the item deck. Equip them and place them into this location. This character has stumbled through the open door of the robot's castle, has claimed it as their own, and will guard it with their life. They become aggressive. Um... Well, I mean, there's no sense... I like having a hero in or a, a card in my hand of a character because I can use that to to aggro guys when they need it, right? So uh, or when there's like aggressive dudes out, I can throw a guy in there and weaken them. So I kind of want to hang on to that one. Uh, let's go ahead and draw a guy, I guess, right? Draw one character or take a character from your hand. Let's just draw a character. If whoa, if they are weapon holding, I drew Garal the Warlord. Holy. Rud, look at this guy. He's got some stuff. Oh, I didn't have to turn that off. Holds Targon's Edge or the Farm Blade. Well, I don't I have the Farm Blade? Don't I have the Dirt Twin Sword? So let's just go with what we find first. Targon's Edge or the Farm Blade. Targon's Edge. Torgon's Edge. Whoa, what was that? A tempered metal shield. Can't be used by ghost characters. Plus one damage, plus two defense. That's amazing. Okay. I feel like we're kind of amazing here. How do I have plus three defense? I think I only have two. I think I messed that up somewhere. Oh, nope, I got three. <laughs> okay, so he's got that. Then it says, what? Draw them two additional... Oh, here I am shuffling. Okay, so this guy has Torgon's Edge and then two, two additional items. So there they are. The Phantom Blade. I didn't even... Uh, vision beacon. Meditate on one lost item. Yeah, these are all cool and all, but I think this game is going to end pretty soon here. So let's. This guy has. What's his strength? Seven? Ooh. Oh, wow. This guy's dual wielding these things. So this is a, a net plus six damage for him because he can dual wield these things. Holy cow. Okay, so he is probably just not to be messed with. And he's aggressive. So maybe. Oh, and I need his little little thing wherever it is. He is not somebody to be... Is he a hero? No, he is not. Uh, I don't know what his... Is that his face? That's his face. Okay, so he's there, and he's aggressive. Normally, he is not, but he is because he's guarding that castle, right? Wow, well, okay. So, like, I could throw this guy in there and weaken that guy, right? Like, that's the whole point of this. But I, I feel like I'm going to use one action point to move into this, and this guy is aggressive to me because I have the sword he wants. Uh, and he has 39 hit points. So let's let's do... Yeah, let's just use this thing, right? 39 hit points. Okay. Round one. All right, so I have a plus what to... I think I don't have any pluses anymore, right? No, no, no. Plus one to first strike. Okay. So I have a plus six to this roll. Five and then plus one. So I have a plus six. 
So I've got, of course, 13. He has plus 5. 6 plus 5, 11. Okay. Been doing too much quick math here now. My brain is failing me. So I get to go first. I get to roll an extra damage die for the first two rounds of combat. Heroic strike twice per battle, once per battle. Add a d6 to this attack's damage. <gasps> okay, let's do it. He has 39 hit points. So I rolled a what? Of course, a 10 plus 19 plus 6 is 25 points of damage. Wow. So he's at 16. Now he gets to roll back at me. And he only has a plus 6. Uh, so he rolls, what, 12, 13, minus 3. So I just took 10 damage from this guy. Uh, 10 damage puts me at 26. God, it's so easy to die in this game. Uh, I get to roll my last extra die here. Oh, no, really? I rolled just about as low as I could possibly roll. Four. Fantastic. Plus six. So I did 19. Ooh, I'm going to make it, though. That's 19, right? Because that's six plus uh, nine is 15 right there. That's almost enough to kill. Uh, plus all this mess. Wow. Okay, so I killed this guy. Now, the important part here wasn't to kill this poor guy. We'll send you back, buddy. Um, the important part here was he drops this, right? And... I have too much crap, and you know what? I don't even care anymore. I'm going to drop this and loot that. And the reason why is because of our quest. Pick up an item dropped by a character that you don't control. He dropped it when I killed him. Gain one quest point. We're up to 14 now. Okay, now this is a fantastic thing that I can... I don't know what it is, but okay. Uh, if it was this thing, great. If it was this thing, great. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to drink some stuff here. The ground fox bones in this tonic have been imbued with arcane properties. It heals 15, so I just go right back to max. When used, roll a d6. If a 3 to 6 is rolled, gain one action point. Oh, one. Dang. Okay, well, that would have been nice to have a free action point. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to equip the marsh extract. Anyway, it looks like it's the same thing, except for it's heal 20. When used, roll a d6. If 3 to 6 is rolled, gain one AP this turn. Okay, so I still have two action points. This guy's still coming for me. We can still fly around. Like, we got this. All we have to do now is not die in two rounds. So, how do we make time progress here? Um, these guys are just going to march towards me. I don't have any more location cards. Yeah? No, I don't. Okay, so we can spend one to draw a location card. Bilkid's Pond. Uh, then I can spend one to, I guess I'm going to walk away. Then I'm going to end the turn. I'm going to, everybody's going to heal for two. Nobody's hurt at all. I'm going to get all my actions back. We're going to progress that. We're going to draw a new one of these. And these idiots are coming for me. I love this. I've never had the guts to take their sword before. I also didn't have a bat I could fly away on either. This is amazing. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Blade Hoarder, two quest points. You have three swords in your hero's inventory. I have two swords. Isn't there a sword kicking around here somewhere? I thought there was another sword here somewhere. It's if we determined if this is a sword or not, and I said it, it, it was, I think, right? Dang. Okay. Okay. Wait, what happened here? Oh, yeah, they all moved. They were here and went like that. Okay. Oh, man, I think that's a sword. Like, could I fly up there, pick up the sword, and just end it? Um, ooh, that's pretty amazing. Okay. This guy doesn't move. He just hangs out. Right? Well, he's aggressive anyway. He is aggressive. I thought he wasn't, but he is. Aggressive. It's right there. Okay. I mean, I feel like this is easy. I just drop some stuff and fly over these two guys. Oh, no, I'd land on one of them. How hard could it be to find another sword somewhere, he said. Well, does this guy have a sword? No, because I have his sword. <laughs> Torgon's Edge. He does have a sword. Ooh. Okay. So either... I mean, I could just run down here and end it, <laughs> and then end it again. 
and we win. But where's the fun in that? If we come over here, this guy attacks me, and he gets what? Plus four, plus six? Man, I gotta be ballsy to get in there, though. Like, I gotta have some guts. Hmm. Well, wait a second. What is this? What is this? Rift Crystal. Crushing this fragile crystal creates a small temporary time-space rift while also releasing a healing mist. Shuffle the item discard and then draw three cards from it. Place one into the inventory of your hero and then discard the other two. Heal for five. Is there a sword in the item discard pile? There's the golden sword. So there's, there's a shot. So we're going to crack this open. Um... It says and then discard it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shuffle this, draw three, and pray that one's the golden sword. <laughs> How insane is this game? So good. Alright. I need a golden sword, man. Like how awesome would that be? Okay. Draw three. Alright, let's put these back. <laughs> That's incredible. Okay, so there it is. Boom, have three swords in your hero's inventory. One, two, I have 16 points. Okay then. <laughs> what luck. That's great. Like, like the whole thing with this, hold on, let me read this again. The win condition in the questing game is based on gathering a set of quest points before a set time of day. At the beginning of the sixth round in a long game, no, we're skipping that, in a short game, that's what we just played. Um, and I'm gonna end this with 15 minutes to spare, so this is good timing. Uh, a player must gather 15 quest points by Meridian after completing six rounds to win the game. So we've done that. We have accomplished the task. Uh, so what we can do here, if I spend one... Uh, here, let's have our bat fly into the castle. <sighs> let's just swoop in on this joker, right? So what does his thing do? This His thing is uh, outside of battle for two action points. Roll 2d6 plus luck. Your luck is three. We got seven, so that's ten. If nine or more may teleport... Okay, so we got it. I don't know why. I'll never remember that. This is another reason why these books work for me. I'm too dumb to remember what anything I read last time I played says, so it's, it's brand new for me every time I play. Uh, so we just got to fly into here. Boom. This guy attacks because he's all aggro anyway. Uh, and now, let me do the quick calculations on this guy here. So he is seven, eight, nine, thirteen. So he is plus thirteen. So let's put... Let's put a plus one on the three, and I'll just try to remember that's 13. <laughs> so, actually, what if I use these instead? Oh, that's that's not damage anyway. That's defense. So what does this guy have? Eh, on each turn in his location... Oh, he may or may not be aggressive if he rolls. There's a whole thing to bloodthirst down here. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. None of that, none of that changes anything or matters. Uh... When equipped... Oh, the, oh, he has 10 more hit points than I thought. So he has 52 hit points, actually. But I don't think he starts with those. So he had 42. His max is 52. And he probably has been alive for at least one round now. Because I just put him out there, yeah? Right? Last round. So he healed those two. So he has 44 hit points. Uh, no extra defense. But he has plus... Z, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage. Yeah, my goodness. My Oh, he also has a shield? I missed that. He has that shield I was admiring. Holy smokes. You know what? Knowing... Oh, no, not that. Not the one I was looking at, but he has a shield. So he does... Oh, my God. Ooh. You know what? Maybe... maybe uh, knowing now that this guy does so much damage, I, I, I take it back. There's no way. And with a shield? No, we're not flying. This guy would just destroy me. Eh? Why not? Why not? Let's have our fun. I mean, we've basically won. I could just stall the game out at this point and win. Um, oh, and it's more beneficial for him to have the sword than it is the shield, I think. So if he's wearing two-handed shields, or I mean swords, I think he would use the bigger damage. I think that's the way that works. Yeah, forget it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's 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 have let's hash this out with this guy. Okay. Do I have anything I can drink? This, but it doesn't do me good. I was hoping I would have, like, the power thing, the... Uh, Plus two attack points. Okay, roll for initiative. I have one, six. So I have six, ten, eleven. Uh-oh. He has four. 
9, 13. So he goes first. Dang it. Okay, so he's going to do 13 minus 3, so he's basically a plus 10. So he did 18 points of damage to me. Holy... He just halved me from 36 to 18, just like that. Now, I will tell you this. The way this works... We haven't done this yet, so I want to show you just for fun. Right here. Equipping I or using items in combat. To use an item before damage. So before my roll. Ooh, and I get an extra die. Uh, okay, so I have to roll 2d6. Let's see what we get. Oh my god. If the roll is 2, can you believe that? I just rolled 2. Equip or pick up the item. Oh, use, equip. So I... Uh, the Marsh Apple Extract is what I'm trying to drink. So I get to use it. It's plus 20 hit points, so I'm back to max. Uh, when used, roll a d6. If 1 to 3 is rolled, gain 1 AP. So if I roll a 1, 2, or a 3, I gain an action point. I rolled a 6, of course, naturally. So this is gone. Uh, but I rolled the worst possible roll. Reduce my attack damage by 2 d6. So reduce my attack damage by 8. So... So I'm only at plus 7 this time. So that's uh, 16 damage. Oh my god. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 16. So he's at 28 hit points. That was terrible. Just to try to save myself. Now he gets to attack. He's at whatever. So that's 9 plus 13. No, plus 10. Because I still have my, sh my armor, right? So he's really only plus 10. So he did 19 damage. So he hit me harder this time than last time. I'm down to 17. So it's back to me. Oh, I forgot to roll my third die. So he took an additional three. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, all right, so now this is the last time I get to roll the additional die. I don't know if this guy joins in combat. I should probably read up how my followers work. Uh, seven, eight, nine is 17, 23 damage. He has oh, two hit points left. I lose my extra die, and it goes back to him. He does, uh-oh, I think he just killed me. 9 plus 10 is 19, and I have 17, so I just got killed. Yeah, that guy was a monster. I can't believe he has two hit points left. Uh, okay, so I got knocked unconscious. So if we go back to the combat rules, uh, unconscious, let's see here, yeah. Characters who are one of the combat rules, zero, meaning that character has been defeated. Defeated player-controlled heroes cannot die. They fall unconscious. Other characters die when defeated. Uh, consciousness roll for one. So it's still my turn. The problem is I'm going to pop up and this guy's going to aggro me. There's nothing I can do here. <laughs> this is dumb. Uh, for one AP, so I have three AP, so there's one. On their turn, let's see, 3d6 plus mind. My mind is eight. Or is it four? Because I don't, I'm not, I guess I'm still wearing my stuff. Uh, so I rolled a what? Nine, these stupid cards are on their way. I keep having to lean over. So I rolled a 9, 10, 11. Just on the roll, I need a what? A 15. So 11 plus, even if it's only plus 4 is still 15, but I think it's plus 8. So I still made it. So I have 10 hit points. I pop up, and then I get aggroed by this dude, right? Oh no. Let's see, if the total is 15 or higher, can immediately move one location, ignoring any aggressive enemies. So I could move, but I don't want to. I want to fight this jerk again, because I can kill him in one round. So all I need to do is win. <laughs> I've done this before, and it never works out for me. <laughs> so you know what? We're going to run away. We are going to use that. <laughs> okay, so that was not as good as I wanted it to be. Let's go ahead and burn another card to draw, or an action to draw a card. Enchanted Compass. This is a jewel item, too. Um, I can only have one, and I have to keep this one equipped to get the points, but we've already got enough points, so it doesn't matter. The needle of this enchanted object can lead you elsewhere. When equipped, for one action point, roll 3d6. If a 6 is rolled on any die, draw a location into your hand. Place it in the same turn for no AP cost. So that's kind of cool, but I'm I'm hoping to get like a healing potion or something. So you know what I'm gonna spend oh see and this idiot's going to <laughs> Okay. I have to to spend this to move down here because I don't want to fight these guys now. But in here, remember this is the ghost place. I take a d6 damage, so I know it won't kill me, but it still sucks. 
So there's six damage, of course, so I'm down to four hit points. Wow. Wow. This round did not go smoothly. So let's end the round here. So this, this guy's going to heal for two, give him up to four. I'm going to heal for two. These guys aren't injured, but they do move. I gain another quest. Have your hero become conscious after being unconscious. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> but that's it. I mean, basically, we just have to end the round here, and then we win, right? Because that's that's it, right? So I could draw cards. Let's draw, oh, another sword <laughs> and another guy, right? So now it's like I can do anything that I want on this turn, but uh, it doesn't matter. I have enough points. I could also um, run into this combat and get knocked unconscious and pop up and get more points. I could have my guy run in here and try to flee and get another point, but ultimately it doesn't matter. They've all moved. Now it's my turn. I end the game and we check to see if we have 15 points, of which we're going to have two more. 18 points. I didn't even need that last round, but there it is. That was it. What? It's so crazy. This game tells the best stories in just such a short amount of time. It's just wild what happens in here. I cannot tell you. I have played, this is probably my sixth game now, maybe seventh. And I have died on turn one. I have on turn one, I think I told this already, right? Where I found a castle and had some guy fight and he ran away and ran into my path and I took him out in the crossroads. I have, I have fallen down a, a, a pit that was here. Um, and fought this guy. I, I think I, I think maybe I've seen this before now that I think about it. I have seen um, uh, where I've had to like escort a, a prince and a princess or something somewhere. I have just all kinds of insane stuff. And there's so much more in here. And like the game is, is actually very inexpensive like for the base game. And so I, I don't know, you know, everybody's financial situation. 160 bucks before shipping, which is 25 bucks, I think, for me in the U.S., in the Western U.S., so, I mean, you know, you're looking at it a lot, 185 or so, you know, maybe to get this whole pack. This is all I have is the base game. Um, when I add all the things to my cart, as you can see I have here, um, it winds up being like $119 for me to pick up the five things I don't have, right? Or six things I don't have, I guess, right? Because it's these, these are like packs, so you get like a, a price break. If you buy both of those and both of those together, otherwise you buy this separately for what, 18 and 18 is 36. So you save two bucks here. Oh yeah, it tells you, it's got the math on the website. Um, same thing with these little mini expansions. I don't even know what they are, but like I kind of want all the stuff for this game. It's so good. I, I just, I'm really impressed with this game. Uh, Vile Invaders expansion here, right? This is a whole other thing. So I don't know what this is, but it, I think it's it, like it's a one-off. So you need these four boxes, that box. Then there's this cassette tape thing here, which has like its own special zone and little book. So you kind of have to have it if you're going that far in anyway. Like who has a cassette player? They give you the MP3s, by the way. Um, but you know, like this, this whole zone has its own thing. So you, I mean, if you're going in, you may as well go all the way in. So I, uh, you know, while there's stock of this, I think is the, is the thing, you know, this is not a game that you find, you know, on the shelves of target or whatever, right? Like the games like this, and I've never played anything that plays like this. This game is fascinating. Uh, and not too many people bought this on Kickstarter, right? That's another thing, you know, you don't have 8 billion people playing this game, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of a, a limited thing. And it's just wild. Just the stories that it tells in such a short amount of time. It's, it's perfect for that like after work adventure. Like you've got some time, have some dinner, play a quick re you know game of this, and just, that's a short game. This was a short game. We could keep playing, and I'm in good shape to actually keep playing, right? I'm in really good shape to, to go all the way through. I just had to get this video out there to show these second edition rules, how smooth everything is. Yeah, it's a lot to track, especially when you get up into the long game. It really gets to be like, I need some more table space. Like, I couldn't make the camera go uh, far enough away to where you could still see things where I could actually map this out because this size might double, and you have more dudes running around, and I can't avoid these idiots. They're in every game I've ever played. Uh, it seems like. So I just, I don't know. The game is phenomenal. I really like this game. So uh, that's Dark Venture, second edition. Be aware of that when you're reading rules and facts online. None of it really exists yet. What is today? September 15th, 2024. So anything before that date is probably first edition, right? Um, the FAQ here was adapted from the first edition FAQ that like there's a link to Google Drive floating around, but this is corrected for this, but that one still exists. So when you search for it, you get there, uh, but it won't help you. It'll harm you. So it's all right in here in this tiny little book. It's very easy to follow these rules. Um, yeah, this game is fantastic. I didn't even talk about these dudes. 
right? This is a whole optional thing <laughs> that is in this box. That I, forget, I even forgot. I've never used them because I thought, oh, you know what? I'll get used to the game first. I don't know. It's amazing. One of these guys cannot be used in, multi in single player. Um, the solo rules... I think these were not initially in the game. Did I understand? Like, I would love to like find a timeline of this game's uh, development. I, I don't really know how it worked, but it, it sounded to me like Rob Lemon made the game, and then I don't know what his last name is. Daniel from the Dungeon Dive. That guy's like the only person on YouTube I like follow enough to care about. Uh, made up like solo rules, and then like worked with Rob to implement them in the game. I guess I don't know, and it plays so smoothly. I love it. It's this is how this should play. I have no idea how first edition plays. If you have it, there's an upgrade kit on that site. I would strongly suggest picking that up. Um, it's only $17 if you have the first edition. Get yourself on the second edition. This plays really well. So it's been a pleasure. This game is fantastic. I really, really enjoy it. It doesn't always go so smoothly. Sometimes you get wrecked. Sometimes you make a dumb decision, like get rid of your quests because you think you can get a better one, and then you screw yourself out of the points you needed to win the game. Sometimes that happens, and it's just, it's a blast. It plays differently every time. I, um, you have to see two playthroughs side by side, like not side by side, but like one after the other or whatever. You have to watch two playthroughs just to see how different they are. I completely forgot this guy could even be, I, I could, he does combat and stuff for me. I didn't even like bother with it because it was just like, I don't need to because I'm a beast. Um, yeah, I don't know how this works. Maybe he's just for moving, but I think they can do combat and stuff. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't read the follower rules too closely because I kept never finding them. So um, I don't know, but maybe I'll just have to, to glance over this here and see how that works. Um, oh yeah, he can like move by himself. That's right, I was only using him for... Also, they may move and engage in combat along with the hero they're... Oh, joined at no cost. The follower's AP... So see, I could have had this guy probably killed this this guy. We, we, we could have killed him then, right? Dang. Uh, in any case, <laughs> my bad. Uh, yeah, so remember, games are made for everyone's recreation. I'll see you next time.